Hi everybody. Um, it's like to welcome you all to our meeting on um, Society of uh, Paradigm, Saturday night. See there's still more people around me, that's good. Um, just like to talk to you a little bit about mass media and the effect that it has on our society in general and how it's being used. And one of the examples I'm going to use is we've got keyed up here. And so I want I want you to kind of watch it and understand what it is that we're dealing with, and then I'm going to talk about a few things after that. I think it's only five or seven minutes or something, isn't it? It's one minute thirty seconds. Oh, sorry, it's not that much. <laughs> so let's let's watch it, and then we're going. To, I'm going to you know talk about things for a few minutes, and then Robbie's going to take over after me. And Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our greatest responsibility, responsibility is to serve our Treasure Valley communities. El Paso, Las Cruces communities, Eastern Iowa communities, and Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about our own country, plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 This is extremely dangerous. And I'm telling you. So I think you get the idea. You know, it's it's absolutely schizophrenic what they're doing, what they're doing and saying. They forgot to preface what Big Brother says. Yeah, and so so what we have is an echo chamber and um, a scripted message being sent to people en masse from every individual outlet. And if you think that this is just in this case, it's not. It's in almost every case where news is being reported to you. It's hand-picked, it's selected, it's gone over, and a spin put on it, and then the same message is put out time and time and time and time again. And this is what 90% of all people are watching. This is where they get the information. They're trusted information. This is where they learn about the news and what's really happening in the world, what's going on. And so you, you start to understand why there's this uh, disconnect. You know, no cognitive thinking. They're all giving the same message. They're all telling us the same thing. It must be true. You know, if you tell a lie enough times, it becomes true. So this is, this is a form of brainwashing that's taking place here. <clears throat> and so, Mass media is being deployed in the modern times in the same way that the Roman Empire deployed bread and circuses and, and entertainment and distraction. So basically what mass media is doing is providing the distraction and the bread and circuses that you, that you focus on. You don't look at the real issues. You don't think about the real issues. You don't think. It's all there for you. It's all being delivered to you. So, it's a very, you know, kind of destructive thing and it's degenerative society. It blocks any kind of critical thing. Everyone gets into the sheeple mode and the sort of don't criticize. It must be true because everyone's saying the same thing. Two classic examples of what is going on today are in Britain and in Palestine. There's the Scripple case, no check poisoning by the Russians. How many times did you hear the press say, the Russians did it, the Russians did it, the Russians did it, no check poisoning, we have proof, we have proof, we have proof. That was two weeks ago. Look what's been uncovered. That is a manufactured lie right from day one. 
That was an operation being run that was poorly run. Obviously, mistakes were made. The people are still alive, as far as we know. Um, they can't even prove that it's a Novichok Russian agent. They can't prove where it came from. But yet, that's not what the perception is that's out there. You know, a lot of people are still struggling with it. And BBC News, even after it became clearer that it wasn't the Russians, that it wasn't Novichok poisoning, they forgot to report on the two or three nights in a row. They forgot to report on it. Anything to do with the scripple or no one check. They just, it wasn't in the news. See, it wasn't in their benefit to be in the news, so they didn't report on it. So, through misinformation, disinformation, and no information at all, it's just as powerful. It's not what's being said, it's what's not being said. That's just as, <coughs> as powerful as what's being said. I'd say more powerful, because at least then you, you get the conspiracy theories, you get the vacuum where everyone starts to, you know, stretch and grab facts and try to fill in the blanks. This is where you get this, you know, bread and services is what I like to call it. Yep. So, Scripple is one case. The other case is <coughs> Palestinians, the return march home. I don't know if any of you know what's going on on the Palestinian border as we speak. The first day that the demonstrators showed up, there was 770 people shot, of which 15 were killed. Friday, there was a further over 500 people shot. Where was this? In, on the Palestinian border uh -huh. um, in Palestine. Israel, the Israeli army is doing this. But the next day? Or Just the past Friday. Friday and then Friday again. Yeah, two days in a row. Two Fridays yeah, this Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. The demonstrations are ongoing. The media, you cannot find hardly anything in the media about this other than if it's a spin, the Palestinians are attacking the Israeli border. That they're being aggressive. And I keep asking, how many IDF soldiers were killed? Well, none. Um, how many people breached the border? None. None. And then they're specifically targeting journalists, cameramen, Anybody that looks they might be might be um, an agitator or a leader. So in other words, they're behind their microscopes at between 500 to 1,000 yards, and you have a spotter with a very powerful scope, and he looks, and he picks the target for a shooter. That's how they work. They work on a team. The guy that is the spotter tells the shooter or the um, sniper guy who he's going to shoot. And what they're doing is they're... they're Killing the ones that they think are the most dangerous, and they're crippling the rest. Journalists. They're leg shooting, knee shooting, elbow shooting. You're crippled for life. They're not using full metal jacket rounds, which are copper co covered on steel, that make a hole in and a hole out, according to the Geneva Convention. They're using an exploding round. So you get a 3.8 inch entry wound and a 300 caliber exit wound, you know, you get an exit wound that's like four or five inches in diameter, right? So the meat, bone, and everything goes with it. That's a crippling wound. Your life has changed when that happens to you. So no reporting. Almost nothing. And the spin is on. So it really shows you how powerful media is today and how they can change a story that clearly has a lot to it and make it seem superficial and make it seem like there's nothing going on when in fact there's lots going on. And this is happening not just in these two places but all over the world. This kind of deployment of media is being used against us. So you all as activists need to think about that and have some discernment and ask the questions. You know, where, when, why, who, how. These are simple questions to ask. If you can't answer those questions, then you need to really question the story that's being told to you. If you cannot go through those, that series of questions and answer them as they're telling you the story, then there's a problem with the story. It's just simple. It's an easy exercise to go through. You know, who, when, where, why, how. Answer the questions for yourself. No, nope, no answer, nope, no answer, no answer, no answer. It's simple. So what I'd like to leave you with is, is that we live in tough times, and it's up to us 
to try to get the truth out there as much as possible and fight this kind of thing. This kind of echo box chambers thing. It's just disgusting. So when a civilization can no longer differentiate between reality or fantasy, then that civilization is at the end of its existence. I think we're just about there. Pretty sad state of affairs. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Robbie, and thank you very much.